I was doing a live stream Tuesday night, reviewing The Boys Season 3, which is now up on the live streaming channel. Go sub to that if you haven't already. Link in the description. At one point, Ms. Marvel came up, and I remarked how the finale episode was dropping in just a couple hours, and I hadn't heard a peep about it. The buzz for this thing was zero. Fans were still buzzing about The Boys, and God knows they still can't shut up about Stranger Things, and with good reason, but the Ms. Marvel finale? Nothing. Pretty weird, right? You'd think a big Marvel show that was still dropping new episodes would be more of a talking point. You'd think someone would be buzzing about it, especially with how popular Marvel is constantly telling us this character is. But no, apparently not. Well, people are definitely buzzing about it now, and in true Ms. Marvel fashion, it's for all the wrong reasons. <sighs> Hit the intro. I'll see you on the other side. Fifty minutes this episode clocked in at. The one where Kamala went back in time, the big bat of the season got killed off and her family found out about her powers was only 41, but this episode, where all she has to do is deal with a bunch of government ass clowns who we've already seen get pooned at every turn? F***ing 50! I'm guessing because the Disney Plus deal requires Marvel to produce a certain amount of content per show, whether we like it or not. And weirdly enough, this episode probably had the least amount of filler out of all six episodes of the series. But does that mean it was time well spent? Good God, no! Not only was this the stupidest episode Ms. Marvel has done, it's probably the stupidest episode any Marvel Disney Plus show has done! When I started doing these reviews, I said the Marvel shows were having trouble sticking the landing, and now you know why. Let's dive into this thing, shall we? The episode picks up the morning after the convenience store got blown up. The damage control agents are surveying the wreckage, and the lead agent lady, Agent Deaver, is like, this is what happens when the wrong people get powers. And that probably sounds racist, but then she clarifies that by wrong people, she means kids, because Disney+. Plus. And yeah, she's definitely got a point about that. So she wants to lock the city down and bring that enhanced individual in before someone gets hurt, even stressing to her underling that they need to be using non-lethal rounds so they can capture Kamran without killing him. All things considered, while Deaver's being presented as the antagonist, she's really not coming off that badly here. And considering what's about to happen, we should be actively rooting for this woman to succeed, even though the writers really, really want us not to. Cut to Bruno helping an injured Kamran make their way through a subway train as they're pursued by two damage control agents. Kamran can't control his powers, and he puts a number of innocent bystanders in danger in this scene alone because they keep flaring up accidentally. Wow, I can't imagine why the government would want to keep someone like him off the streets. Aside from him not being white, there doesn't seem to be any justification for that at all. Unless you count his car being the stupidest color imaginable, black. Which, if you don't, you should. So, God help them, Kamala and her mom have returned to Jersey City. Those poor bastards. They get the whole family together, and Kamala gets ready to make the big reveal to all of them that she is... Nightlight. Which they already know because the mom told the dad off-screen, and the dad spilled the beans to everyone else also off-screen. In what's becoming a weird recurring theme for this show, none of them have any questions. Or at least any good questions, like how the f*** did you get superpowers? The closest we get to a good question is the brother asking if she dropped that kid off the roof in episode 2 on purpose. I think the brother might be my favorite member of the Khan family. If only I could remember what his f***ing name is. They're all really excited, and the dad stresses up and down how proud of her they are. That might be a little premature. Frankly, she's lucky she hasn't gotten anyone killed who didn't deserve it yet. But he does worry, and he wants to be sure that she's being careful. Kamala points out that she doesn't want to sit by and 
do nothing when she could be helping people, but this is interrupted when Nakia desperately wants to FaceTime because the convenience store exploded last night and she can't find Bruno. Oh, right, him. The backup to the backup love interest. We can't let anything happen to that guy, or Kamala would only have two potential boyfriends left. So Bruno's not answering his phone, Kamala's getting really worried, but before she can put on that embarrassment of a cosplay suit I'm sure the actress was secretly thrilled to be done with, it's Mama Khan to the rescue, and she walks in with the official Ms. Marvel costume. Where did this come from? Did she make it herself? Did she have it made by someone else? When exactly was it made seeing as how they told us that they literally just got home from the airport? I don't know. What I do know is that this kills my theory about the whole show being the story of how Ms. Marvel makes her costume. I thought she was gonna cobble it together from bits of those clothes that other characters were constantly giving her, and instead Mama Khan just pulls the costume out of her ass. So, what have all these characters been giving Kamala clothes all the time for? What the hell was that about? Beats me. I guess it's just a thing they put in there because... Girls like clothes. Great job, writers. You've really got your finger on the pulse of the Marvel fan base. Anyway, the costume is an improvement, so whatever. Kamala suits up, heads out. She's using her hard light things to air walk over the streets, and I am calling bullshit on this. She's swinging on light poles like an acrobat, parkouring off the sides of buildings like she's been doing it for years, and may I remind you, in episode one, she was so unathletic that she was hopeless trying to catch a f***ing ball. So how did she suddenly learn how to do all this? How did her athletic ability just magically shoot through the damn roof? This has been happening all season and I'm f***ing tired of it. We never saw her train or practice this shit. Her powers don't include super agility, at least not that we know of. So how is she doing this? Contrary to what Ray Palpatine would have us believe, writers, characters can't just max out their XP because you want them to. Some things they do actually need to earn. It only gets stupider from here. Here, guys. Bruno and Kamran try to take cover at the mosque, but Nakia thinks that's insane because every government agency in the country probably has them under surveillance already due to it being a mosque and everyone being racist, I guess. So instead, she'll cover for them while they hide at the high school. Oh yeah, a school. A place that's synonymous with safety. Then, damage control, irredeemable monsters that they are, peacefully walk into the mosque, politely ask to see everyone's ID, say they're here for the people's protection, and that they're searching for a dangerous threat. All of which is true. So of course, everyone at the mosque tries to stall them, all the while I'm asking myself, why are we supposed to be on the people's side here? Damage control haven't done anything bad yet, they're literally just doing their jobs. They legally apprehended Kamran for being involved in some way in an attack on a large gathering of people that involved superpowers, he escaped capture before they could get to the bottom of it, then he attacked them with superpowers twice when they tried to apprehend him again. It seems to me that damage control have every reason they could need to treat Kamran like a f***ing criminal at this point. I mean, have you seen what color his car is? That kid is just no good! And if he really cared about doing the right thing, he wouldn't have escaped the DODC in the first place. He would have just stayed put because all he had to do to clear his name was tell them the truth truth that he was just trying to help people at the wedding. Kamala and Bruno would have backed up that story, and nobody would have said dick against it. So if Kamran's being treated like a dangerous threat, it's because he's acting like one. And Damage Control have not done anything unreasonable yet. So they search the mosque, and Nakia tries to stall them some more by making them think that she's hiding someone suspicious, but it turns out to just be some dude. Meanwhile, Sheikh Abdullah sneaks Bruno and Kamran out the back. A uh, quick thought here. If you guys don't like government agencies keeping the mosque under surveillance, it might help if you weren't aiding and abetting a dangerous superpowered threat who is wanted by a government agency for, you know, all that stuff he did. Just saying. They take cover in an alley, and lickety-split, Kamala airwalks slash parkours down from the sky. Yeah, that's not gonna feel credible anytime soon. And she's all, what are you guys wearing? Clothes, Kamala. They're wearing normal, everyday clothes. You know those things that people are constantly giving you all the time? 
That's tough. She gives Bruno a hug, being happy that backup love interest number two is still on the table, but then suddenly Comron's powers just kind of explode out of him and make a huge mess because he can't control them. And I really need to point something out here. Comron has little to no control over his powers, and you've already shown us that he's clearly a danger to himself and others because of this, so why are we jumping through all these hoops to keep him away from the people who have the facilities to prevent him from accidentally hurting someone or himself. People who so far have done nothing to suggest that they have bad intentions, by the way. And sure, that won't be the case for long, but it is right now. So why are we doing all this? Why is Kamran simply going to the DODC, telling them the truth and making use of their facilities so he doesn't accidentally hurt someone or worse, not an option? So Kamala calls Kareem for help, and he knows someone who can get Kamran out of the country, so that's a thing. Kareem is surprisingly well-connected for a kid who doesn't look old enough to buy beer without a fake ID. Those red daggers sure do get around, don't they? Night falls, they hide out in the high school, and Nakia meets them there. She's still mad that Kamala didn't tell her about any of this, and Kamala was afraid to tell her because Nakia hates superheroes, which would have been something helpful to tell us beforehand, but we're just learning about it for the first time now. Now. So Kamala apologizes, and just like that, they're friends again. And that was it. That was the epic conclusion to the Nakia is angry at Kamala subplot. I said they could resolve that in one scene, and it didn't even take that long. It was more like a quarter of a scene. That's how important this was. For God's sake, any time there's potential for some character conflict on this show, all Kamala has to do is say, I'm sorry, or don't do that, and then suddenly it's over. Because God forbid anything interesting happen, right? Damage control, pull up outside the building, our quote quote heroes try to figure out what to do and then suddenly Zoe appears. Remember Zoe? No? Well she's back anyway and she's all hey guys I just happened to be in the other room just now. Also I know Kamala's secret identity and I want to help because I owe Kamala for saving my life during that incident at AvengerCon. That Kamala was the cause of. Yeah, she left that last part out. But otherwise, I'm not even really paraphrasing, which should give you a pretty good indication of how haphazard all this shit was. So now they need a plan. A plan that's a little more elaborate than just taking the bus, so Kamala might be in over her head here. Luckily, her brother shows up to help out. He walks in like, Hi, I'm here too! I came in through the window! How did he even know where they were?! Does it really matter at this point? Cut to outside, where Agent Deaver gets a call from her superior, who tells her that them trying to apprehend dangerous threats at a school is not worth the bad PR. So... He wants her to stop. I am not kidding. And wow, if this show had just dropped a couple months earlier, this would have been a lot less painfully awkward. She points out to her boss that they've got two super-powered individuals on their hands here who have been leaving a trail of destruction through the city, but it's Jersey City, so who the hell would notice? Am I right? Am I right? None of which is untrue, by the way, but the boss doesn't care. He tells her to pull her people out, and I guess his solution to the dangerous super-powered threat is to do nothing and let them continue continue to be a threat. You know, I'm beginning to think that these damage control guys are just not that bright. So the call ends, and Deaver decides to continue the operation anyway. And to be honest, I don't really blame her. The school is deserted except for the people they've been chasing this whole time, and just because you stop pursuing the dangerous threat doesn't mean that it stops being a dangerous threat. For Christ's sake, the writing is so f up here that the woman the episode is presenting as the villain feels like the only person in this situation with her head screwed on straight right now. Back to our heroes, a word I'm using more loosely by the minute, and Kamala's unveiling her big plan to get them out of this corner they backed themselves into. And that big plan... Holy fucking shit. The big plan to outwit these highly trained and armed government agents is to home alone this bitch. Literally, the plan is to set goofy, cartoonish, Looney Tunes-style traps all over the school, and with any luck, that will stall the bad guys until the plot says that it's time to call it a day and go home. And if that sounds dumb on paper, Jesus H. Christ is the reality of it even f 
looking worse. Before showtime, Nakia admits how surprised she is that Zoe didn't spill the beans about Kamala's secret identity, and I'm not really sure why. Zoe has never been presented as a bad person. A bit of an attention whore, maybe, but not a bad person, or a bully, or someone who'd screw somebody over like that. Why is Nakia surprised about this? But Zoe reiterates that Kamala did save her life from the danger she caused, so she should be able to tell people when she wants to. Cool. Someone tell her parents that before they spill the beans to anyone else. Because who, boy, are they about to? Meanwhile, Kamala takes Bruno aside and fills him in on what went down in Karachi, and Bruno's like, dude, don't tell Kamran his mom is dead. Presumably because Kamran's powers are dangerously unstable and he's a huge threat to himself and others. With that being said, let's get on with the business of trying to stop the authorities from apprehending him before he hurts or kills someone. What follows, oh my god, what follows, is a sequence that would make Kevin McAllister proud, and I don't mean in a good way. It's seven or eight minutes of the kids running around the school setting traps, and these highly trained government agents packing high-tech weaponry falling all over themselves like utter buffoons. It is an absolute f***ing clown show. One squad of agents gets taken out when they step on a tripwire in the chem lab, which causes one big dose of chemicals to fall into another, which creates a giant explosion of foam. You know, because that's a popular meme. And those young people on that interweb sure do love memes. But my favorite part, my, my favorite part is when Nakia rides a bike, very, very slowly, mind you, in between two groups of agents, so they all fire at her, miss her, and hit each other, taking themselves out. The only thing missing was a laugh track. I'm not exaggerating when I say the show has become a goddamn cartoon at this point. And you wonder why I said damage control could have been dealt with in one scene? Because giving them multiple scenes led to embarrassing shit like this. These are government agents whose job it is to hunt down and detain dangerous superhumans, and they're getting clowned by children! But we've still gotta feed the shippers, I guess. So Kamala and Kamran have a little moment when they're hiding, you know, while all the non-powered characters have been busy doing the dangerous stuff. They do a little hand-holding, and they even almost kiss, but then Bruno retakes the cock-block crown when he interrupts them before they can. Thanks, Bruno. <laughs> Then Bruno creates a distraction so the lovebirds can fly away together, and he gets cold cocked in the face by like five agents in comedic fashion for his effort. They really lay into him too, it's pretty funny actually. But Bruno, buddy, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but I'm starting to think this girl just might not be worth the trouble. Anyway, Kamran isn't too keen on getting help from the Red Daggers, because his family kind of has a feud with them, and he really wants his mom. You know, the woman who ditched him during their breakout at the DOD see, he starts to sense that something's wrong when Kamala won't tell him what happened to his mom, which allows another agent to get the jump on them, and without hesitation, Kamran tries to straight up murder this guy. Kamala has to save the dude. So finally, she tells him what happened to his mom, and wouldn't you know it, the kid the villains have been calling a dangerous threat this entire time acts like a dangerous threat. They run into a bunch more agents, and he tries to murder them too, and Kamala has to stop him again. Now, while all this has been happening. Zoe... Jesus Christ. Zoe has been streaming to her hundreds of thousands of followers, telling them what's going down and to get their asses over to the school. Because what better way to de-escalate the situation than to put more innocent bystanders in harm's way, right? So now there's a huge crowd of people gathering outside the school, including Kamala's parents, and by this point, Bruno, Nakia, Zoe, and the brother have all been captured. Remember that for later. Suddenly, Kamran blasts out of the school, all pissed off. Agent Deaver tells him to get on his knees, he doesn't listen. She warns him again. He lights up his powers threateningly. So finally, she tells her men to drop the motherfucker before he goes nuclear on them. And again, I can't really blame her. He's clearly got bad intentions. He just tried to kill multiple agents, and there's a big crowd of unprotected innocent people right over there. What else is she supposed to do? How the f 
is she the bad guy here? So while the cops and the agents open fire, now they're packing lethal rounds, somehow none of them are able to hit Comron from a range of like 20 feet. He does put up a hard light shield, but it's like this big. Then Kamala bursts out of a second story window and sticks the landing because the plot says that she's magically some kind of super athlete now. She shields Comron from the hail of gunfire that wasn't hitting him anyway. The people are screaming and Kamala's parents are audibly crying out, Beta! So if no one in the crowd knows her secret identity after this, I'll be f***ing stunned. Small arms aren't getting the job done, so Deaver breaks out the big guns that looks like a Stark Tech weapon, and Kamala's shield goes kaput. Now Kamran's down, Deaver's readying another shot, so Kamala steals herself and whispers, Embiggen because that's something she says in the comics. And sure, it's a perfectly crumulent word, but here we have no context for it. Is Kamala a diehard Simpsons fan? Not that I've seen, so it doesn't mean anything. So she breaks out Scanlan's hands and her magic plot armor. She's basically armor from the X-Men now, another character she's ripping off, and she starts wrecking shop, flipping over vehicles, attacking agents who are essentially just defending themselves at this point. The crowd cheers on Kamala as she valiantly fights off the government operatives who are just doing their jobs trying to apprehend a dangerous super criminal. Comron's back on his feet now. He's attacking the agents, and with the force he's using, I'd be shocked if he didn't kill at least one or two of these guys. And finally, he gets so pissed off, he blasts a car right into the crowd of onlookers, putting many innocent people in danger. Oh my goodness. It's almost as if the kid with unstable superpowers, who the government agents have been calling a dangerous threat, is proving himself to be a dangerous threat. What are the f***ing odds? Kamala catches the car before anyone gets hurt because she has super strength now too. Sure, why not? Deaver grabs a gun and tries to stop the kid who almost got many innocent people killed, but this pisses Kamran off even more, so his powers explode out of him again. Everyone is in horrible danger. Bruno's this close to getting his eyes gouged out. Kamala has to form a protective dome around the two of them. Kamran is totally distraught. They'll never accept me and they'll never accept you either, Kamala! Well, Kamran, I'm certainly no expert, but maybe if you'd stop trying to kill them for a minute, that might smooth things over. This isn't my home, blah blah blah! But your mom saved it for you! She sent everything she had to protect you! Which... is... One interpretation of those events, I guess. Still doesn't make any sense why his powers didn't need to be unlocked like Kamala's did, though. And that's literally all it takes to make Kamran realize that he's kind of gone off the deep end here. So, after he tried to murder multiple government agents, might have succeeded with a couple of them, and knowingly put many innocent people in grave peril, Kamala, like a true hero, helps him escape so he doesn't have to take responsibility for any of it. Whoopee. So she punches a hole in the ground, and I guess he gets out through the sewer. Then she lets the dome down. Deaver orders her agents to apprehend Kamala because she was, after all, attacking them a minute ago. But the crowd of onlookers surge forward, being all, What? Arrest this innocent girl who just aided and abetted the dangerous super criminal who almost got us killed and helped him escape? Not on our watch! So they all crowd around her. Mr. and Mrs. Khan start talking to this strange girl in a superhero costume like she's their daughter or something. Isn't that? That weird. And before Agent Deaver can get to her, Kamala air walks away and the whole crowd rejoices as this super-powered vigilante who just fought against government agents, destroyed government property, broke numerous laws, and helped a dangerous super-criminal evade capture, escapes. Because she's a superhero, or whatever Z's. Then Agent Deaver gets another call from the superior she defied earlier, who immediately relieves her of duty. And, yeah, I mean, what did she think was gonna happen there? Holy shit, damage control are fucking stupid. All the agents get recalled, and I don't know why they're not trying to pursue the super criminal who just tried to kill them and a bunch of other people, but the plot says it's time to go home, so they don't. And the season's basically over now, so... I guess the damage control subplot is just not gonna be a thing anymore, even though nothing about it was actually resolved. They're just gonna let the dangerous super criminal and his accomplice go free because... 
it. Really? They're not even gonna question the kids they apprehended who were working with Kamran and Kamala? Not even Zoe, who said to all her followers that she was friends with them and must know who they are? Wow. Later on, Kamala's watching a bunch of TikTokers rave about what a super amazing badass she is, and the dad comes in, and he talks to her while we see this montage of the other characters, Kamran meeting Kareem, and Bruno putting a note in someone's locker, but we don't know who the note's for or what it says, and it's never mentioned again, and then there's some other stuff with other characters that doesn't matter. The dad tells her how she got her name, that Kamal means perfect in Arabic. Please don't encourage her, but in Urdu, it's more like wonder or marvel. Seriously? Her name literally translates to marvel? Wow, that's pretty f***ing convenient. So the Ms. Marvel codename is born, and with that, Kamala airwalks away off the roof of her own house. Secret identity? What the f*** is that? She sits on a light pole for a while so they can do that for the trailer shot that looks like the comic book cover. Then, one week later, she meets up with her friends, and Bruno may or may not have stolen Kamran's car. None of them seem really sure about that, though. Bruno just assumed the car was his now after Kamran snuck out of the country, and beats the hell out of me why he'd want a car that's such a stupid f***ing color, but it beats riding your bike to Caltech, I guess. And BT dubs Bruno, thanks for ruining the joke for me. You f***ing killjoy. And then Bruno tells Kamala something that... made me physically ill. He was comparing her genetics to her family's, and he discovered something. There's something different about Kamala's genes. Like some kind of... mutation. Oh dear God. And they even played a few notes from the X-Men the Animated Series theme song, in case they weren't being obvious enough. Da -na 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 -na. No. 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 No, 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 okay. Just for the moment, Let's disregard how Bruno, a high school kid with none of the necessary facilities or equipment and with no advanced education, was somehow able to analyze Kamala's genetic makeup to find something every doctor she's ever seen in her life somehow didn't notice. Are you f kidding me? The first mutant in the 616 MCU, and it's Kamala f***ing Khan? If it was some important mutant character like Cyclops or Magneto or even Kitty Pride, it would make sense, but it's Kamala f***ing Khan! And then I see all these people flipping out online because ZOMG, they finally introduced their first 616 mutant. Well, Sort of, but they did it with a character who's not even a f***ing mutant! She's a canonical inhuman who you already retconned into some kind of weird interdimensional hybrid whose powers may or may not be magical and which had to be unlocked by a doohickey that may or may not be f***ing alien and now on top of all that, she's also a mutant? Do you understand how f***ed up that is? How insanely convoluted you just made this whole thing? Do you see how none of it makes any goddamn sense at all? If her powers are mutant-based, then why did Kamran have the exact same powers as her? Why did her powers have to be unlocked in the first place? This is horse shit! This absolutely reeked of the writers trying to have their cake and eat it too. Kamala has extra-dimensional powers that can do anything the plot needs, so that's a multiverse connection. She can time travel, she might have alien origins that they'll hint at in a minute, and now she might be a mutant too? Because we already tried to ramrod her onto an Avengers lineup in the comics and that didn't work out, so let's try linking her to the X-Men. Why the shit not? Hell, the writers don't seem to know what the f*** she is now. She's a little bit of everything. Because if we make Ms. Marvel a character who is everything, maybe the fans won't realize that she's actually just a big f***ing nothing who has no unique identity of her own anymore outside of being the Pakistani superhero. Because at the end of the day, representation was more important than actually making a quality character or product the people being represented could actually get into. And if you weren't confused enough by by that shit, there's a mid credit stinger. Kamala's taken five in her room when the bangle mysteriously lights up, and then... 
It's not clear what happens exactly. She either shapeshifts into Carol Danvers, like in the comic, which wouldn't make sense because her powers aren't about changing her shape anymore, unless they are. It seems like they're giving her new powers in every episode, so who knows. Or, what I think happened, her and Carol Danvers switched places because we've got to connect Kamala to the Marvels somehow. Either way, there's Brie Larson to be continued in a movie that, after these last six episodes, I don't think anyone's looking forward to. Definitely not this guy. So they said there were two bangles, right? My theory is that Carol, wherever she was out in deep space, found the second bangle and that caused some kind of transference thing to happen. And when they found the bangle in the flashback, it was attached to a blue arm, which could have been Cree. A lot of people were thinking that. So some of these dots connect, but how can the bangle be from another dimension if it's also alien from this dimension? None of this shit adds up. And frankly, I'm really not in the mood to try to decipher it anymore. This video has gotten way too long already, so let's just get this out of the way and go home. What started as a series that was unobjectionable, albeit boring, turned into a confusing, idiotically paced shit show by the end of its run. Half the series was filler. Kamala just magically learns how to fight from out of nowhere because that's what the plot needed to happen. The last two episodes were a goddamn mess. The finale felt like it was intentionally made to cater to the dumbest person in the audience. The villains were a joke with zero character to speak of that didn't exist solely to serve the plot. I was actively rooting for damage control instead of our heroes because aside from the part where Deaver disobeyed orders, they were coming off like the good guys. And now the writers have twisted Kamala Khan's identity into such an indecipherable batshit pretzel, I don't know what the hell she's supposed to be anymore. Honestly, her not being an inhuman was a big mistake in my opinion. They could have retconned that crappy inhuman show and made Kamala the MCU's gateway character into the Inhuman Society so we could learn about it as she does. There are plenty of stories they could have told with that and there's basis for it in canon. Instead, they threw it away and came up with all this crazy new shit that ended up being so confusing I don't even know what it was supposed to be. Her powers come from another dimension but they're strongly hinted to be magical somehow. The bangle is hinted to have possible alien origins and she might be a mutant? What the f*** is this character? I don't know. And I don't feel like speculating anymore right now. Ms. Marvel sucked. It had a good cast and a likable lead actress, but they were largely wasted because the writers had no idea what the hell they were doing. And if this was a taste of what the Marvels has in store for us, God help Phase 4, because that movie sure as hell won't. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment, ding the bell icon, and follow my Twitter to be notified about new videos. I also have a live streaming channel. The links are down there. Hit that thumbs up, share, subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed, and I'll be back with more soon. So you guys take care. Do all the YouTube things. F*** you, Jersey. I can't stress that enough. F*** you, Jersey. I'll see you next time.